So Steve, South America. So he prefers to just run everywhere. So in his prime, he would be able to reach about speeds of up to about 30 miles per hour. Obviously, he's not going to push you too much on a day like today. And he also knows the food I throw on the floor does not run away. So there's no point really running that fast. But as well as being able to run very fast, he can jump very high. So from standing, I'm only five foot five. That's impressive. He can reach three times that size. So he can jump to about 60 foot. So that just removes the need of being able to fly as much as our other birds do. He can fly. It's mostly into the field next door or up into a tree. It's a lot easier just to run everywhere. Now these are loved by bats over in South Africa for two different reasons. The first being, you know, they eat a load of different things. They are actually omnivores. So they be things like lots of berries, insects, rodents. But what they're most known for catching and killing are venomous species of snakes and lizards. And they kill them in a slightly different way than what you'd expect. A lot of people say he's very long like Stephen. <sighs> He did this in the fastest way. So I've been here four years, and yet Lucci has been here two months. And guess who's his favourite? I can tell you that now, it is not me. So with him, you know, they kill venomous species. They don't kick them to death, and that's because they're not about to prey. They don't kill with the feet. But in my back pocket, hopefully, I've got Steve's favourite dinner. Now, it's not a real snake, it is rubber. And they need a bit of a believable performance. Can everyone just scream when I throw it on the floor? Because otherwise, they won't kill it. See? Flying snake, it's the new species. Go on, get it! Uh, yeah. oh! And he gets it on the floor as hard as he can. Keep going, it's still wriggling. Charlie's not dead. Charlie's not, I can tell you now, Charlie's not dead. We are doing a believable performance, Steve. Kill it. Here we go. Here he He's still wriggling one more time. That's all I'm asking. One more time. There we go. There we go. We have a massive round of applause for that. So what he wants to do is he wants to alternate between the head and tail. Although he can eat venomous species, if it turns around and bites him, it can potentially be quite fatal. Now farmers love them for that reason, because obviously if you've got livestock, but more importantly children, you want to limit the amount of venomous species on your farm. But they're loved for another reason as well, and it's because they do a massive alarm call. So over in the wild, they would hang around in groups and they're highly predated on basically anything that can take them well. So things like eagles and hawks, wolves and coyotes, and they do a massive alarm call. Now farmers again use it to their advantage. If you've got livestock, they would also get predated on. Sorry about this, there we go. If you've got livestock, that would also get predated on by these animals. If they start screaming, you know to go out and save your livestock. Now for health and safety, I cannot bring out one of our wolves from the drive. So what we do is we associate banging with it. Steve, you're going to tell everyone that there's danger. Oh. One more time. I don't think everyone heard you. Get out of the audience. <laughs> Stephen, do you see me in the audience? No, oh, come on, one last time for everyone. So as a farmer, um, obviously if you hear that noise, Stephen, get out of the audience. I know Freedom Day was on, but you've still got to social distance. You just don't care. The last couple of days in just demonstrations, he just walks off on us. You just don't care, do you? And I'm trying to tell everyone of how nice you are. You make me look silly. I wouldn't trade it for the world. We've got three Serenas, we've got two R Centre. And obviously associating banging is great, but we've been doing a lot of building work. And every single time a nail goes into a piece of wood, we just guess Remus screaming all day. <laughs> okay, have a massive round of applause as he makes his way up. Is that it? Oh, I'm going to okay, introduce everyone to some really naughty birds as well. Yeah. Or we not. <laughs> and it's, uh, I've got the biggest love in the world from mischievous birds. They're always my favourite. I just really enjoy flying them. So I'm going to introduce you to a black vulture and storks. Oh, they should be coming out. There we go. Hey, Lydia. You're coming out, kid. I can play them up and saw them around. So <laughs> big. There we go. So, before I introduce you to Trump, 
And this is Nibbles at the back, and he's an American black vulture. Now, I was talking about how important vultures are onto the planet, and what I really want to talk about is the plight of them. They're one of the fastest declining animals on the planet, but not many people know about it because they aren't the attractive animals. Now, it's a really bad example because he's actually one of the few species that isn't endangered. Can you not hit people in the face? But, in general, out of the 23 vulture species in the world, 16 are critically endangered. But you'll never see them on charity adverts because they are the cute and cuddly animals. I have to say, he is the sweetest thing in the world. He is also the reason why we have no crabs in Karina. And that's just because when he was a youngster, and as he was before he was fledged, our boss's daughter, who was young at the time, used to walk him around Nutsford Post Office in a pram. So obviously he really liked crabs. And obviously we can't have children in them in the demonstration. But with vultures being extinct, uh, going extinct, it is, when I was growing up, it was things like pandas, it's now snow leopards, tigers, where it's a very attractive animal. People will want to pay for the animal to sponsor them. In the wild, the only time you see this animal on the ground is when they are ripping open carcasses. So during prime time television, you're having your dinner overnight time, is it something people want to see? Not really. I don't blame them. I've got such a strong stomach nowadays. Obviously, you just don't want to see that. But what we really want to talk about is the African species, so just like Chumley. At the moment, we are losing absolute thousands of them on a weekly basis. And it's down to things like poaching. Poaching, a lot of people are aware of. Things like the rhinos and elephants are being poached for their ivory and for their horn. But why is it being talked about is the vultures' involvement. Vultures are the animals that signal to the authorities that there's going to be a poacher on the ground. If, say, you've got vultures and they spot a treat an elephant that's just been killed, they know it's their next guaranteed meal. But a lot of times the species aren't big enough to be able to break open that carcass. So they just want to take off into the sky and start to soar around. Because that builds up about 400 vultures in the sky. And things like lions will look up into the sky, see those circling vultures, and know the fact that they've got a next guaranteed meal. So they can go and break open that carcass and the vultures clean, clean up. It's not through helicopters or jeeps that the poachers again call. It's looking up to the side, seeing these vultures and knowing that there's going to be a poacher. Unfortunately, over there it's no longer just your stereotypical villager. All different nationalities going over there, because ivory is currently worth 10 times the price of gold and they can make absolute millions. It's estimated 56 elephants are killed on a standard weekly basis. And next to it, you will have 600 dead vultures, and that's because they lace the carcasses with arsenic, cyanide, bleach. Any poison they can get their hands on just completely obliterate this vulture. And in a lot of species, we've lost 99.99%. That just means that there's going to be a lot more disease in the world. We've currently just come out of, you know, our lockdowns. There's going to be a lot more if we do lose this animal. So, I mean, what I wanted to create was a mini ecosystem, but they clearly did their flying this morning, and they were like, yeah, hey, I'm just going to weed instead. But with the European white storks, they would go over to Africa for the first five years of life, so they would be around vultures. We bring out things like Malibu storks in our um, summer shows at our Nutford site. And we just try and create as many animals as we can to show you. Without this vulture species, nothing at the park that you see today will eventually exist. So go home and change your opinion. I'm not going to ask you to, you know, find them really cute and cuddly like I do. We're just having you found respect for them. Because you really need them. They are nature's dental, and we're going to be massively affected without them. But these are the last birds we are going to be meeting. Uh, these are Tony and Lydia, by the way. Uh, normally they have a little bit of a scrap. They are in the little bit of a... They're a breeding pair. But they just, you know, sometimes they just want to eat the same weed. And that's what I love about them. But yeah, um, well, we'll be putting these birds away. Feel free to watch us get the storms back. But that, thank you very much and enjoy your day at Nosley. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you got seven minutes to walk to see a lion, so I'm so sorry about that one. <laughs>